me show you what the experience is right from the start, right from the entrance, and just we'll just do a walk around. It's actually kind of good to do the walk around when it's a smaller crowd. Then I can finish my walk while I'm doing that. So here we have the main entrance, obviously. Yeah, there's the first thing you gotta know is don't stop on this beat. So you just keep right on going. You're, you're good, brother, and you're good too. I'm sorry. Have a good day. I'm sorry, brother. All right. Probably not the best idea, but I'm gonna try the auto exposure or auto ISO feature on, on the software I'm using. Hopefully it doesn't look too bad. I guess I'll learn from experience. So over there is not much. It's just the registration and everything like that. So I'm gonna kind of skip that just because it's not particularly interesting. Everyone's pretty friendly. A lot of great cosplayers. And then here we got the main kind of thoroughfare. Go up the stairs. Once we get to the top of the stairs, we'll turn left and just work our way down the hallway. So some of the things you might see on the screen, I'll just mention on the way back up. So we'll start the rest of this tour from this end. This end is kind of quiet, not a lot going on. There's an informational booth over there to your left. Usually just a bunch of seating and a little cafe so people can get food. People just come here to take a break and rest. Um, if I look behind, there's more outdoor seating. And that's pretty much, that's all that's happening here. It's just a place for people to calm down and rest. So as we continue on, things will get more interesting. Um, Snacks and food you can get there. Kind of pricey, of course, but you gotta eat, you gotta eat. Some chairs. Um, so, as we come closer here towards the stairs in the main entrance, you get the main, what they call the stage zero. So they have like activities and little presentations there. Um, they'll have like dancers, performers, karaoke, I think, quiz shows, skits, just general entertainment. Uh, other than to document it last year, I don't spend a whole lot of time here. I mean, it's perfectly cool and fun and everything, but there's always like a panel that I'd rather be at probably. Of course, it's not open yet. Like I said, it's ceremony start at 2, and we're barely at 11.20, so still got a ways to go. At least this way we can see everything clearly in a smaller crowd. It's just going to get crazier as soon as uh, things officially start. To the left is probably one of the most important halls, the dealer hall. Can't get into it now because it isn't open until 2 p.m., so a little way early. Yeah. Plus, I've covered the dealer hall and the other halls in my previous two videos, so I'll probably just put a link there for you to check that out if you're interested. But this will be super packed once it's open. There's another informational booth. You know, helpful, but probably not the most interesting thing for a video kind of skip past that. To our right, and both our right and left, I should say, are entrances to the Artist Alley, which I don't believe is open as well. Let's see. Let's see what the hours are for Artist Alley. Yep, it opens up at 2 as well today. Now, if you've ever been to Fanime Com, there's some famous reoccurring characters, and here's one right now. I guess he's just called the um, mask guy? I kind of already filled some of his signs, or the sign guy, I should say. I think that's what he's called. Let's double check. Yes, 
sign guy. He's a staple. It's always fun to see him. He's got really clever signs that he makes. And uh, free ass, no, they're not for sale. Onward now. So he's got the dealer hall and the artist alleyway kind of documented. One hallway that is open is the gaming hallway. Uh, again, I'm not gonna go this year super in depth just because in the last two years I've documented this. But well, let's just take a quick walk through. Again, right now it's sparse, and uh, actually for this year is the first time I've entered. And they're always experimenting with the setup of this. Uh, I remember last year there was a stage immediate to your left, and not this year. They had double stage last year actually. So let's see what they're doing this year. So this year they got there's like some gaming demos, which is different. It used to be more towards the right over here. No, they're like, you have to like, if you really are worried about it. All right. Just made a quick change to my white balance there. Hope the video looks good. Still a little weird doing this blog style, just because I'm talking out loud. I'm probably like a crazy person. But I'm going to make hopefully minimal edits, so That'll be nice, just to pretty much just publish this video without doing a whole lot of editing. Huh. I don't know if they're done setting things up, but this year the gaming hall looks kind of sparse. For one thing, there's no big main stage. Like I said, last year they had two, and in previous years they had one. So I don't know if they got feedback and they kind of decided to scale things down. I thought that everything was sort of getting back to quote-unquote normal after COVID. Maybe it has nothing to do with COVID anymore at this stage. Maybe it's just them getting feedback and deciding to do their gaming room a little bit different and smaller. Uh, which, to be fair, I've come to the gaming hall mostly just to wandering around or hardly ever play the games. Get too self-conscious to play with other people around. Um, the stage, uh, I've sat in a few of their events, some trivia and some gaming competitions. But still, this has uh, usually been a little bit bigger in the past. And uh, from what I could tell, always does well to people who do want to come to Phantom Made a game. So this is a little bit surprising. It's uh, a little smaller than usual. You know what? Let's head into the main gaming area. So like I said, this year I'm not planning on really documenting the halls, but uh, this might be a chance to at least get a little bit of visuals on it. It's going to be really loud in here, so I don't know if you can hear me. cool arcade games, stuff that's usually only available overseas or other markets, I should say. Let's go this way. Super loud. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Like I said, Phantom is not fully open yet, so this is probably going to get more crowded, which surprises me that they took away the stage and didn't really replace it with anything. Already super crowded. Yeah, I can't understand why the gaming hall is smaller this year. Maybe they're still setting it up. Maybe the stage is coming, but I don't think so. It looks like the gaming room is set up the way they want it to be set up. Sorry, he was going to cut through. Sorry. ability to move here. Yeah, 
really strange that the gaming hall is set up this way. It's hard to get a sense of it in the video, I know, but in past years, it was just definitely a bigger area. Like I said, the big main thing missing is the stage. Maybe they just decided it wasn't well attended, so they would scrap that to save cost. But they didn't really then take that space and then use it for anything else, per se. I guess that's both good and bad in the sense that there'll be just more room to move around. But uh, it doesn't look like they did much to expand the arcade section. What else? Here we got the computer and desktop gaming area. This might be a little bit bigger compared to last year's. Maybe that's where they used some of the new space without the stage in the way. Yeah, refreshments, of course. I guess if it came to Fanime for gaming and all they did was just kind of discontinue the stage to get the amount of games you could do the same, I wouldn't be too upset. And they just utilize that new freed up space to kind of spread things out so not so crowded. I guess I'd be okay with that. But if uh, I came to the gaming hall for Fanime and one of the things I enjoyed was that stage, then I guess that's kind of a bummer. These are tabletop games, you know, apples to apples and Monopoly and card games and whatnot. That is pretty much the gaming hall. I think all that's going to change is that it's going to get more crowded. I don't think they're setting up anything else. I guess they have kind of spread things out a little bit more so that people aren't so crowded on top of each other now that they don't have the stage. But they didn't really add more. But uh, other than that, other than the stage, it seems like everything is fine. So in way years past, Fanime wasn't just at the convention center, but also in nearby hotels. Uh, when COVID hit and then Fanime came back in the first two years, it was just at the convention center. And this is the first year where finally they're back to having some activities in the local hotels. I think it's just mostly, um, from what I understand, them playing like anime. There's a shuttle that'll take you there. So, post-COVID, Fanime is regaining its strength, as it were. Getting better. I think that missing stage in the gaming hall is kind of an anomaly. Not really much more to show except where the panels are. I'll be brief on that just because there's not really thing too exciting to show you a bunch of conference rooms. As we go through here, past this informational desk, and then uh, over to our left is the other entrance for the artist alley. People are already queuing up for that. It's a cool thing about Fanime Com. It's not just fan uh, anime, as you would think. Um, there's other related stuff. There's gaming, of course. There's this local artist. Like, there's something for everyone. I mean, if you're a hardcore gamer, the gaming hall. If you just like to buy collectibles, there's the dealer hall. If you like the art, and then there's Artist Alley, of course. Uh, if you want to just learn about anime and Japanese culture, there's got to be at least one panel that'll entertain you. So what I'm finding is that I really can't trust the white balance on this. I'm going to have to pause real quick. So I'm going to trust uh, the software here I'm using to do the white balancing as I go. 
Uh, it's gonna look a little janky as it changes due to the lighting condition, but yeah, that's just the way it is. Maybe. So here it's completely empty right now. This is ex how exciting the panel area gets without the crowds. It's a pretty good size and it wraps around the back. It's a little bit quieter here. I'll just ramble on about a few other things that come to mind. So I'm using uh, an iPhone 14 Max Pro. Not the cutting most up to date, but still pretty good. I've uh, using the Black Magic Cam and to do most of my recording probably. And then I also have the DJI Mimo app that um, if I want to use it specifically with the, the gimbal I'm using. I'm using a DJI gimbal. The reason why I'm mixing the DJI gimbal with the Blackmagic uh, software is that overall I like the Blackmagic app a little bit better than the DJI uh, video uh, software. It's perfectly fine. And if I do use the DJI app with the DJI gimbal, I get a little more control as far as zoom and whatnot, but overall the Blackmagic app is a little bit better. It also has audio controls. Let's see, test this, yeah. So, like I said, I'm kind of also using this as a way to learn how to combine all this stuff. Like I said, I learned that I can't have my neutral density filter and the gimbal unless I, maybe when I get home and I'm not out and about, I can kind of fidget with it. But I just don't think the balancing on the gimbal with that neutral density, neutral density filter is gonna work. It's just the motors just aren't powerful enough. I am using also for audio, the DJI mics that the gimbal can handle because it kind of hangs off the other side. And uh, you know what, maybe that's the solution. If I have both the DJI gimbal using the DJI mic system where I plug it on one end and then I put the neutral density filter on the other end, maybe that'll balance it out and then the motors won't uh, collapse on me. I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap things up there. We'll see if I can do more of these walk and talk uh, blog things or vlog or the term we're using these days like i said a little uncomfortable with this not my strength well, hopefully though they get better but uh, until the next video take care out there